Hello, this is Stefan Mückstein from Energy Lab. Uh, welcome back. Uh, this is the second video of a trilogy about Nurai Island and anywhere solution, energy solution for Sire Nurai Island. Um, if you haven't seen the first part, I would encourage you to go to my YouTube channel and first look at the first video. Uh, today we're going to look at uh, a lot of the other KP, uh, solar plants and KPIs that uh, Anaware is achieving here. And before we do that, let's look at some of the questions that you had um, and I'll try to answer them. So without disclosing any confidential information, uh, as indicated in the first video, Anaware is pro providing a PPA solution for Sire Nurai Island. So what that means is that Anaware is responsible for the energy production and they sell um, kilowatt hours to Sire Nuraya on a monthly base. Uh, Anaware is responsible for all the equipment, so the cables, the design, the diesel generators, the solar panels, etc. etc. And especially also the software, which is critical. Um, and um, yeah, Sire Nuraya doesn't need to invest at all in CAPEX. Regarding the economics, Traditionally, um, or versus a traditional system, the client typically saves in the range of 10%. So the kilowatt hours that um, Anywhere sells to Sion Nurai Island are at least 10% uh, cheaper than if they would uh, run 100% on, uh, on diesel generators. And as indicated, uh, Anywhere achieves this by using a proprietary software, um, that, which is a hybrid controller. So that allows the company to run the diesel generator is extremely efficient and um, add also the solar, which reduces the diesel consumption. Um, regarding the CO2 emission versus the traditional and the, um, the, the, the system that Siren Nurai Island used prior to using Anaware, roughly the CO2, remission, uh, CO2 emission has been reduced by in the range of 50%. That is again by optimizing the diesel generators and reducing the, so, uh, the diesel consumption with the solar system. Um, and then there was another question about reliability. So right now the system is very reliable. Uh, we've been running this site for four years and there have been two trips. Um, each of them has been less of than five minutes. So versus the alternative running traditionally 100% on diesel generators these system trip way more frequently and uh, take longer to ramp up again. So now let's uh, go and go actually to the beach villas and I'll show you there the solar system there. Let's go. Now we are on top of the, one of these beach villas. Uh, the solar plant that you can see here is around 10 kilowatt peak. We installed the equivalent solar plant on 32 villas, beach villas here. So in total on the beach villas, we have uh, 320 kilowatt peak in that range. Um, as you can see, some of the solar modules have wind protection. The wind here is not very strong, but to avoid that some of the solar panels could get moved or blown off the roof. We have installed these uh, wind protections. Initially we didn't and that caused one of these incidences which I'll share some pictures with you. Um, let's go now to the next plant. We are here at the Central Beach plant. Uh, this is the largest single solar plant uh, on the island. It's approximately 320 kilowatt peak and um, it has solar direct mounting structure. And this is useful. So if Sayanurai Island would decide to build here more villas, we could pick them up and move them quite quickly somewhere else. Let's go now to the next solar plant. This is the Telecom Tower solar power plant installation. 
Um, this is about half the size of the central beach installation. So this is actually 150 kilowatt peak um, solar power plant. As you can see, it's the same system. If required, it can be moved quite quickly. Now let's move to the um, South Beach installation, uh, which is a quite interesting installation. We're here at the South Beach uh, solar installation. This is um, Helios Light uh, 1.5 access tracker behind me, the roughly five kilowatt peak. And then we have the air compact east-west structure, which is a uh, roughly uh, 144 kilowatt peak. Over the years, we gradually added uh, solar. So from 2016 until 2020, in 2020, uh, so this year, we added 80 kilowatt floating solar. And this is the solar plant that I will capture and discuss uh, in the third uh, episode of this trilogy. And uh, hopefully I'll upload that video next week. Until then, goodbye.